believe it's going to take us 75 days to close a loan, but I think it could easily take us between 45 and 50 days um, if you started your application right now today. If you're a client we started about 30 days ago, you're probably pretty close to already getting wrapped up. We started you two weeks ago. You're probably at about the 40-day level. Uh, we start your loan application today. It's going to be 45 to 50 days. So we've got to lock in that interest rate that we're promising you for a longer, a long enough period of time that we can close and we can honor what we're giving you. The longer that the rate lock period is, the more expensive that the interest rate gets. And there's nothing that we can do about that. We cannot hire more bodies that don't know how to do the mortgage business. We can only work with what we have to work with. With. So they're not gouging. You have to understand how mortgage-backed securities work, how bonds work, where our first mortgage rates come from. They do not come from the Federal Reserve prime rate of zero. So go to my Facebook page, go to Mortgage Mom Radio, read the article that I posted up there, subscribe to my channel so we can keep bringing you news. Yes. Um, but uh, they're, they're not gouging. I, I do promise you that, and I want everybody to understand that. I thought it was a good question because I can see where yeah. people would it's great. think it, that. Funny enough. Um, cause I, I got a referral from someone uh -huh. and they called same question. Yep. And so I actually went through, I think it's the same article you posted and I was kind of reading it to them saying, you know, understand right. it's not a direct reflection for mortgage. Right. So kind of going through it and they're like, oh, okay, it just seemed ridiculous. This is what I was quoted. And you know, so we kind of went back and forth and then they kind of got like that aha moment where they're like. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought, and I was right. like, no, right. Mortgage rates are not at zero. We're not at a quarter. We're not, you know. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, so we're gonna do one more question. We're gonna tell everybody how to get a hold of us, and then we are out of here for for the week. For the week? Uh -huh. Well, maybe. Two weeks. Maybe. maybe. If I get enough subscribers, <laughs> I'll start coming to you guys daily on YouTube. I promise. There you go. All right. So um, here's the next one. I've got, uh, hi, Debbie. I discovered your show after I got my home in June of this year. Bummer. We would have loved to help her. Um, I'm at a loss at the moment because while I've made all my mortgage and credit card payments to this point, I was just notified that my job and income is stopping effective immediately because of the outbreak. As it's my first year in the home, it's been costly because of things needed to be fixed. So now I have higher than normal credit card debt, um, which I could have managed if I had stayed employed, but now this pandemic thing. I'm trying to be proactive and see what I might be able to do. A best case scenario would be some kind of loan. Wondering if you might have any advice at this time. I've listened to you enough to know that you are a creative problem solver. Appreciate any help that you might be able to give. Thank you so much. So, and I'm getting these. I'm getting them yep. over and over again. And so the one thing that I can tell you is number one, no matter what you do, if you can scrape it together, make your mortgage payment. Let the credit cards go first. Absolutely. Let, <laughs> let the student loans and, go first. And I, call your credit cards. Yes. Let them know that your job has is put in jeopardy due to this pandemic. Yes. Credit cards, you know, they're, they're, working, they're with you. working with you. We're getting and emails daily from all of them from saying, all of them. have you been affected? Have you been Please affected? Call us. Call us. Yes. Um, personal loans, have you been affected? Call us. So make all the phone calls. Every single, and that was the first thing I said is call your mortgage company. Yep. She said, I already did that. I said, good girl. Yep. Um, because you want to make sure that they know immediately. Yes. All of them. Call every them. Every day. Send have. them an email. Put everything in writing. Um, call the, every credit card company. Every debt you have, call them and put it in writing. Immediately. Immediately. Let them know what, how you're affected, why you're affected, and put a plan in place. Yes. That is the first thing you should do, no matter what anything happens, you do that. Yes no matter what. So um, I just want everybody to know there's really been no guidance that has rolled down to us yet to answer what is going to happen. Every mortgage company, every servicing company is going to handle things differently. Mm -hmm. So there's really no way for me to give one generic answer to, hey, this is how you do it. What I can tell you is the first thing I told her to do is call her mortgage company, which she did. Her mortgage company told her that they would actually reflect a 30 day late on her credit report. But as soon as she was able to make up the payment that they would actually remove it. And she said that they were not going to charge her, I believe, the late fees and penalties. Right. So there are, they, they, and I don't know who her mortgage servicing company is, but if you call immediately, you'll find out what your opportunities and options are. Right. The credit card companies are sending out emails daily, the personal loans, the student loans. I'm, I'm seeing them come from every single direction. They're all coming out. I'm Contact getting them, them from companies I didn't even realize exactly. I had something with. Exactly. So. Yeah. So make sure that you're calling them. And like I said, if you if you can't make a payment to something, don't make a payment to the personal loans. Don't make a payment to the credit cards. Don't make a payment to the student, you know, 
student loans make your mortgage payment if you can at all possible do it because i can tell you you might think oh if i don't make the mortgage payment that's three thousand dollars that i have for this month right but let me just tell you that is your biggest payment that you make mm -hmm. and it is the hardest payment that you are going to have to try to come up with the money right. to catch it back up later right. you will find yeah. yourself spiraled out of control so um that's the advice from the mortgage mom it's all i can give you we're done for the day we want you guys to contact us. We want to talk to you. Remember that we've got everybody working from home now. Receptionist is not sitting outside my office, can't hear me on the phone. It's getting a little bit dicey trying to call in and get directly to me. Send me emails. It's the best way to do it. You can go through the website, mortgagemomradio.com. Click on Contact Us. I'm going to get the email. You guys can send me an email direct, debbie at mortgagemomradio.com. If you've got the phone app, you can contact us right through there. You can email me, email Heidi. You can select who you want to eat, email from my team. If you want the phone app, text the word mom to 36260. And we would love to get you guys another show out next week, but we cannot come into the studio. This was actually, you've already been working from home all week. Yeah. And, you know, this was kind of a special. We didn't know that this was going to happen, obviously. So she came in today to get this show done. Um, but next week, we're all working from home. And we won't I'm have the studio. straight home. That's right. And, and we won't have the studio to do this. So I've got to be able to bring it to you um, from my house. I need those subscribers. Please go to YouTube and subscribe to the Mortgage Mom Radio channel. And hopefully, once I have 1,000 subscribers, I can do it right from my cell phone, Manny's GoPro, whatever we've got to do to get you guys the information. So we hope it was a great show. We hope you guys enjoyed a lot and you learned a lot stay safe stay healthy yes and um, hang out at home absolutely get those applications in so that we can actually lock you while we're on the phone and get those phone consultations booked it's 844-935-3634 talk to you guys all next week bye bye, -bye. She's the mortgage mom. This is Debbie Marcoux, the mortgage mom. Do you have our phone app? Are you interested to know what your monthly payments might be? What can you qualify for? How do you contact us? We'll get the phone app. All you have to do is text the word mom to 36260. That's right. Text the word mom to 36260. You can download that phone app and run all of that information all on your own. And then contact us and we'd be more than happy to help you. She's the mortgage mom she can get things done when you're in need and don't know where to go pick up the phone and call mom getting work who's licensed by the department of business oversight under the california residential mortgage lending act california nmls id 237926 also licensed in texas and tennessee 184373 arizona 0941504 and nevada 57237 the preceding recorded program has been a paid advertisement by Mortgage Mom Radio, Inc. We offer this program as a service to our listeners. This station and its management do not endorse or object to the information, views, or opinions discussed in the program. KKGO. KKGO HD1 Los Angeles Orange and Riverside County. One thing the country has is a family too. On the iHeart Radio app. It's amazing. But it really is a special. And streaming worldwide at GoCountry105.com. We are Go Country 105. The following recorded program is a paid advertisement by Brothers on Law. We offer this program as a service to our listeners. This station and its management do not endorse or object to the information, views, or opinions discussed in the program. The opinions expressed in the Brothers on Law show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal professional legal advice. Thanks for tuning in to Brothers on Law on Go Country 105. I'm Larry Mandel. And I'm Rob Mandel. And we've been trial attorneys here in Los Angeles for over 40 years. On our show, we will discuss current events, talk about legal issues, and have some very entertaining guests stop by. So stay tuned every week for Brothers on Law right here on Go Country 105. the Brothers on Law, and I'm Larry Mandel. I'm Rob Mandel. And a big shout out to Debbie the Mortgage Mom. Hey, Debbie. We're Rob. so glad we uh, we follow you, yeah. Hey, well, so you're going to talk about something right now. I am? With How our, did you know? Do you have ESP or something? Tell me, because you talk a lot. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to yeah. talk about our clients and what they have to go through. And Well, you know, what they have to go through is um, not just the injury, not just the... Um, the things that they have to deal with in terms of pain and and 
and getting back on their feet and making sure they can, you know, hopefully get back to work and all that kind of worry. But they also have to deal with the system, the legal system. And it can be very daunting and it can be so, uh, it just adds so much more stress to the equation and, and aggravate the situation that they're going through. Well, it's an adversarial, you know, scenario. It's an adversarial scenario, Larry Robert. Yes, indeed. But, That's but what it is. It's an adversarial <laughs> scenario. But in that, in that context, though, the other side gets to have their doctor look at our client, and that doctor is not always very objective. Yeah, they really get to run you through the ringer. Yeah. And that, one, that process, which they call, quote, unquote, an independent medical exam, which we don't call that. Well, it's not independent. It's, like you said, it's an adversarial proceeding, and it's a means, generally speaking, for the other side to uh, try and poke holes in the person's claim in in the extent of their injury or uh, things like that. So and what really, happens? Go ahead, Ron. Well, that, 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 that was it, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a, a, a tough situation to yeah. be in because, you know, you're hurting, you're, you know, you and, and all of a sudden you're seeing some doctor who is not your friend, who's not there to help you out. He's actually there to hurt you in many ways. Right. He or she. And, so, that, um, so what they do is they make a demand for our client to go see the doctor and the client has to appear. And But what do we do in order to protect our client? Well, uh, what we do, what, what we've always done is send uh, a professional, uh, usually a nurse professional who understands the uh, uh, what's going on medically, but also understands how these uh, physicians can try and bend the truth and uh, do things uh, unfairly, uh, kind of spin the thing unfairly against uh, your, the client. And they're there to kind of oversee the situation for us because we, we're legally entitled to be there. But right. uh, that can make it look a little weird, you know, though the lawyer was there, you know. Uh, but also because, um, you know, we, we may not understand the subtleties of the medicine or the exam that's going on uh, with the client right then. So the nurse uh, professional is that person. Yeah, I mean, they could comment at trial, oh, your lawyer was there. But like you said, it's more important that we have somebody there that knows the medicine and can protect our client and prevent the doctor from doing certain tests like that or invasive tests because that's a no-no. Right. All right, so that leads us to our special guest today, Ava Ategi. Who is Ava Tedgi. Tedgi, right? Right. Did I pronounce that correctly? You did. And Ava is a registered nurse that we've used on many occasions to go and attend these exams, these defense medical exams, as we call them. So welcome, oh, okay. Ava. Thank you. Hello, Ava. Nice to have you here. Hi, Rob. <laughs> hey, can you so, give us, Ava, can you give us a little background of what you, you know, your background in nursing? Sure. So I've been a nurse now for, oh, it looks like 26 years, and I spent the first 18 years working in the hospital.